以赛亚书二章预言，在末后的日子，万国万民都必来西安敬拜。国度基业将在十一月五号到十四号举办十天九晚的荣耀新人经典走进以色列之旅。此次经典之旅共有三大亮点。第一大亮点是我们将观光经典的旅游景点，包括令人心醉神迷的耶路撒冷，参观举世闻名的耶路撒冷老城区，特别是犹太人和列国游客都要前往的西墙，参观历史古迹大卫城，犹大帝的神秘苏西亚，耶稣复活之地空坟墓，耶稣娶老祷告的克西马尼园和即将再次降临的橄榄山。我们还将漫游加利利湖，参观耶稣时代的会堂，并前往约旦河受坚信礼，参观犹太人生活的基布斯，去体验死海漂浮的乐趣，还会去大卫藏身之所，迷人的隐基底。第二大亮点，我们将有关爱犹太百姓的文化活动。我们会去希伯伦参观亚伯拉罕、萨拉、以撒、雅各和利亚的先祖所葬之地。这是一场寻根溯源之旅。我们会邀请当地的犹太拉比分享，他们是如何扎手在耶和华神给先祖应许之地的神奇故事。我们会参加万王之王施工在耶路撒冷的周日聚会和周六为以色列的祷告聚会。我们会与。与弥赛亚信徒一起庆贺，领受一个新人的祝福。除此之外，我们还将出席以色列精锐部队的纪念活动，面对面与以色列士兵互动。我们会参观在耶路撒冷全球极负盛名的高科技公司园区，了解现代以色列的科技发展。第三大亮点是，此次行程我们将全程住在安全舒适的犹太社区酒店，享受健康丰富的洁净佳肴。我们还会一起在传统犹太区的耶胡达露天市场购物，感受当地犹太人真实的生活。此次的行程将安排中文导游，还有少数名额，七月份报名截止，请抓紧时间报名哦。Hi everyone, welcome back to AI News. I'm your host Ethan. Today I have a very special guest. Okay, I say that every time, but this、mm-hmm. one is very special because I met her many times already. She's the、mm-hmm. nicest lady you ever know. So we have Elizabeth Wang Allers.、Okay. Elizabeth Wang Allers. Yeah, and you are actually a fifth generation Chinese, right? Yes, I am. My maiden name is Wang. <laughs> It's the Huang, the yellow. Okay. When and、um, but our family's been in California since the mid eighteen eighties. Eighteen eighties. Yeah,、uh, yeah, one hundred and fifty years. Oh wow! At least、uh, the records don't go farther back than that. But, <laughs> so. Ah, so after five generations, do you speak any Chinese right now? Indian, Indian. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. Okay,、uh, it's better than、mm-hmm. Judy Chu already. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh,、uh, I have a few questions that I want to ask you. I met you before. You are a very devoted Christian as well, right? Can yes. You, please, as a Christian, there are so many people that go like, "Ah,、oh, Christian, we shouldn't touch politics." What's your opinions on that kind of thing? Because、mm-hmm. you're. Obviously, a Christian, and you're running for office. Right, I'm running on love, lives, liberty, and law. So we start with love. Everything starts with love. God is love, and First Corinthians thirteen says that love rejoices in the truth. And there's a lot of things going on in our world these days that are not based in truth, and so that's not love. They they might say we love everybody, but if you don't give them the truth, you're not loving them. Yeah. There's a lot of things in going on in our our schools with our children. I'm a mom of six kids. I've been married 33 years to my husband Ron, and we have six children that are mostly grown now. The youngest one is 16 years old. Six children. Yes, four girls and then two boys. Wow, and you have time to. 
Yeah. Running well, off from her office. I'm not retiring. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got three grandchildren. So our oldest daughter has three children. They're four years old, two years old, when one year, well, not even one year yet. He's a baby. I homeschooled all of them all the way from birth. I always say from birth because you're teaching them even when they're in the, in the tummy. And um, through high school, they graduated, went to UCLA, UC San Diego, and um, our fifth one, Ben, he's currently at Patrick Henry College in Virginia. And Johnny just graduated from high school. So I, so I invested my, myself into them. My husband invested his, his life into them to support us on one income so that I could teach them. So I really understand parenting and what's going on now. If, if parents cannot tell their toddler, their two-year-old, you're such a good boy. You're such a good girl. And, and they, they let their very young children not even have the truth about what is a boy and what is a girl. And that the way that you are born is good. You're, you're a beautiful baby. You're a beautiful child. You're a beautiful boy. And you're going to grow up to be a wonderful man. That is the job of a parent. Yes. Is to teach, is to teach the children who, and affirm, affirm who they really are. That they are made in the image of God and that their life as a human being made in the image of God is precious. That they were precious even before they were born. They have a wonderful future ahead of them. And so I, I, I am running for office because I have raised my children to be strong adults, successful, responsible, happy adults, and I uh, have families of their own. And now I see across our society, and especially here in California, that um, families are really in crisis, and the next generation is in crisis. If my generation doesn't doesn't step in and put put in. Um, it's an invest. It's another investment of my life. Yeah. Um, for others, um, it's going to be a disaster for the next generation. So I'm, I'm not retiring. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, uh, our channel we love talk about homeschool because I think that is the most important thing. And then uh, the only way to save our state, to save our family, to save our country, is to get your kids out of the education system. And you homeschool all of them. That means even before all these are happening, you decided to homeschool. Why did you do that? Um, I started in the 1990s. Um, well, actually, year 2000 is when we officially registered. Um, but I always say we homeschooled from birth, so it was in the 90s. And um, I knew when I was in college in the 80s that our society was already going in a bad direction and my even aunt, in the 80s even in the 80s yeah and, that, you, and you know that's when um people were coming out of the closet and that's when uh, diversity was a big political correctness uh, word um and so i knew that if i said if i put my children into the public school system they would not be my children they would become the government's children, and they would um, be have a mindset that was not formed into the image of Christ. They would have a mindset that was formed and conformed into the image of the world around them. And I wanted my children to not be one of these like cookie cutter people that is just like their peers. I wanted my children to be leaders of their generation. And I saw that as our society uh, spirals down a bad direction, my children could be lifted up in a, um, in a strong position where they could lead their peers mm -hmm. instead of 
go down with them. Um, so that was my goal in homeschooling, was to train them to lead their generation. And then as I was praying for them in 2018, and praying for them to be leaders in their generation, so this is five years ago, I, I felt in my spirit that um, I was not to just finish homeschooling them, but I was to continue to lead them as leaders of their generation, yeah. and that they would need me to like uh, break ground before them. And so if I go into uh, the government sector and I, be and I begin to um, bring California back into sanity, it will, it will pave the way for them to do even greater things. Yeah, and I think it's uh, important that a lot of parents don't have this concept of education. They think that we can just give our kids to the schools and then uh, they will eventually grow out and then uh, they, they will learn different things and then uh, they will become a better person in the end. But that's not how education work. That, that is not how indoctrination work. That is not how kids work. And mm -hmm. I think it's the parents' duty to find out, to help the kids find out their callings. Well, yes, exactly. Yeah. So education <clears throat> is not just like the child's brain is an empty bag and we throw a bunch of information in it. A child is a, an organic, growing, changing person. Mm. A child's not a thing. Sometimes we say, we, we refer to a baby as an it. No, baby's not it. Baby is a person mm -hmm. made in the image of God when grows and grows and develops from, from a even spiritual seed mm -hmm. that God has placed into every individual person. So every child is unique, and it's the parent's responsibility to nurture that uniqueness that God has put into that child to grow in the way that God designed them to grow. And it's much more than just putting information into an empty brain. Mm. And so I think our, our idea of school education is even if it's not an issue of morality and, and it is an issue of reading, writing, arithmetic, education of, of a human being is more than just feeding information and having the child memorize something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on the issue of education, because right now California is it's, it's really struggling. It is like the, one of the worst state. Yes. Our high school uh, education is the worst in the whole United States. It used to be one of the best. Right, yes. California used to be a place where everyone wanted to come because not only did we have the beach and the mountains and great weather, but we had good education. Yeah. And um, it was a great place for people to raise their children and have families. Yeah, you, you live here your whole life, since yes. the 80s. Well, yeah, I was born in Hollywood. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> I wow. was born in Hollywood, yes. What changed? Like throughout your life, can you point out the problem? I know a lot of have changed, mm -hmm. but can you pinpoint a, a spot that, damn, that become different? I was born in 1967 in Hollywood, like I said. And I, it was either 1966 or 1967 that actually um, became was the year when they stopped having prayer in schools. Uh -huh. John F. Kennedy. Uh. Yeah, so it was that era of um, we, we stopped having prayer in schools, um, we, and it was a time of free sex, uh, sexual revolution. It was a time of rebellion against uh, parents, rebellion against church, rebellion against um, traditional morality and family. Mm -hmm. um, so that was definitely a uh, bad turning point in 
California history and that there were times there was riots and th that going on the same year I was born. Mm -hmm. And so from that point there became, there there was more of a division um, between generations and ideolo ideologies. Um, there were there God was working though because at the same time there was Jesus people movement. Mm -hmm. And um, so a lot of the people that had tried the free sex and the drugs and um, communal living and doing, um, not living, you know, not marrying and having families and raising children, they got, they became Christians. Mm. God changed their lives. God changed their hearts. Um, and so they're, so they're, was something beautiful that God was doing with individuals, and I think it was the baby boomer generation. Um, but they did not stay engaged mm -hmm. in uh, government and in um, in public uh, policy and in the academic world. They did not go into um, becoming professors in the universities. Mm -hmm. So while the Christians um, took care of their families, mm -hmm. the rest of society was not being taken care of mm -hmm. um, in a healthy way. And so, I, and I think that's, that's a lot of why we're in this dire situation today. Did you grow up in a Christian family? Like you were yes, always I a Christian? Yes, I did. Okay. My, my father became a Christian when he was 14, <clears throat> and my mother became a Christian when she was young. They. They were invited to a Chinese Presbyterian church in Chinatown um, by by friends and family when they were young, and so my dad actually went up to um, Christian camp where Billy Graham had a lot of encounter with God. Okay. Forest Home in our mountains over here, and um, so my dad had had a life changing experience with the Lord, and so. They raised me as a Christian. I, I was in Chinese church until I was six months old, and then, <laughs> and then, and then my parents uh, took me to a Church of the Open Door, where Jay Vernon McKee was pastor in downtown Los Angeles, uh -huh. until I was five, and then, and then we <coughs> went to a church in San Fernando Valley. So I grew up in a Christian. Christian, uh, good, very good Bible teaching. Now, would you say that, like, like you said, at the time when you're growing up, the society is a mess, and it was all the se uh, sexual revolution started over there already. How did you keep yourself uh, as a straight, a straight line as a Christian? Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's a lot of people, a lot of our viewers, a lot of our younger audience are struggling. They're like. Yeah. I, I I can't do this. The world is like the world is like this. Okay, I I I have to conform to the world, or else my boss is gonna fire me. I can't get this. I can't get that. Mm -hmm. So as a Christian, during that time, with all these pornographic things are already happening in LA in, in in Southern California, how did you keep yourself a straight and uh, with 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 a goal in life and one day run mm -hmm. for senator? Mm -hmm. I'm remembering when when I first asked Jesus into my heart. I was only three years old, and that was because that came about because my grandfather died, and he was my favorite person when I was very little. I would just follow him around, and um, yeah, he would he'd walk around like this, you know. Okay. And so <laughs> so I was three years old, and I'd walk around like that, and so I I missed him so much. Um, I didn't. Under, I said, "Daddy, where did where did Gung Gung go? Why doesn't he come back?" And uh, my dad said, "He's in heaven, and if you want to see him again, you'll see him again in heaven. But you have to pray this prayer." <laughs> and so, okay, oh, <laughs> and so smart I, dad. <laughs> yeah. So of course I prayed that prayer because I want to see my Gung Gung again. So. So I so that was the first time I asked Jesus in my heart, but it, I didn't I just I didn't really you know have a full understanding. I was only three years old. 
Um, and I, then I, but I think because I, that was like death, my grandfather died. And um, that put something into my three-year-old heart that death is a bad thing. Okay. I'm afraid to die. Where did, where, you know, what, what happened to him after he died? And so, you know, that, I, that in a way, that was the fear of the Lord. Yes. That I had when I was three years old. And um, thankfully, I was, I was taught a lot of scripture as I grew up. I started memorizing scripture when I was three years old. And so the Holy Spirit would always remind me of the scripture that I had in my heart. I went to public school all my life. And... I felt out of place a lot of times. Um, I felt lonely. Even back then? Yes. Christian I, already fell out of place. Right. I had friends at church that went to Christian schools. Um, but um, I went to public school. And I, even, you know, when we were very little, they were teaching us that evolution means that we uh, evolved from animals. I knew in my heart. No, that's wrong. God mm. created me, made in His image. And um, and then, you know, then there's bullies at school. And I, I knew in my heart, this is wrong behavior. And um, I was the only Asian kid in my school. Yeah, and, back then. Uh, so, I was, so I was bullied. I remember being backed up against the chain link fence. And some big white boy was like making an ugly face at me and calling me Jap. And oh. I didn't know what Jap meant. And why is he <laughs> calling me Jap? And why is he so mad at me? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I would suppose it would call you like uh, Viet or something. Like, because well, it's Vietnam War. Oh, mm -hmm. back then, Jap these, is already passed. Or right. <laughs> but see, that child learned it from his parents. <clears throat> okay. Because the children, they don't know what they're talking about, right? Yeah. They just, they pick up on what they hear, either from each other, from TV, I mean, now from social media, they pick these things up. Mm. And, and they don't know what they're talking about. They just say it, yeah. right? And that's why our children today, are, they're so vulnerable by what they're being taught at school. Because mm. they, they pick it up and then they repeat it and they believe it. Yeah. So anyway, back to me. What yeah, was I? Yes. <laughs> what was it? How did I stay a Christian yeah. through growing up in public school and the society? Well, the fear of the Lord kept me because the Bible says that if you commit um, fornication, homosexuality, um, if you steal, if you bear false witness, um, there's consequences. And the consequences of God seeing me all the time, God knows everything I say, everything I do, that kept me in line. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, even if my parents have no idea what I'm doing, God sees me all the time. <laughs> and I didn't want the consequences of the natural consequences. So that's another thing that's important for children to understand, that there's natural consequences to our behavior. And... Um, there's bills going through our legislature now on different kinds of vaccines for 12-year-olds because they can be uh, promiscuous sexually. And, you know, the, it used to be, you know, the big deal was that they were pushing condoms for students. I mean, now yeah. that's like nothing. But there's consequences for your behavior. There can be diseases. Um, you know, the STDs, sexually transmitted diseases, let alone uh, AIDS, pregnancy and pregnancy in itself is not a bad thing but there's a consequence to behavior that children just need they need to learn that there is a consequence for what you do yeah we become and choices a, that you make yeah we become a society that's uh we have no responsibility mm -hmm. and we have no direction mm -hmm. and, right because i was once without a direction without a clear understanding of where i'm going all I can think about is like, I'm just going to make a lot of money and I, I'm just going to be rich. That's the only way to prove that I am successful. And in some degree, it is embedded into our culture. It's embedded to California. The mm -hmm. main money market is crazy over here. Everyone is chasing after money yes. and fame. As a Christian, when did you find out that what Hollywood teach is wrong? 
because that's what we all learn from Hollywood. Our viewer are all in Chinese. The way a lot of them understand American culture is by watching all these movies. It's like, oh, okay, American can get all these cars. American girls can wear bikinis and walk yeah. around the street. Well, well Hollywood <clears throat> has been giving us lies and deception for my whole lifetime. Um, so. Again, I'm running on love, lives, liberty, and law. And what we see in Hollywood, what we see in the movies um, and these TV shows is not real love. Mm -hmm. We're all looking for love. We're all hungry for love because we're made to love. We're made to receive love. And our world of sin without God, we don't get what we need. We don't get that love that we need. And so... We need to teach our children. They see some show and it's presenting love. Um, you say, no, that's not love. That's not real love. Here, let me give you a hug. This is real love. Do you feel that you're safe with me? Do you feel that you're accepted and um, I'm going to be with you all the way through, you know, mother and child. I'm never going to let you down. Mm. That's how God loves us. I, a lot of, you know, these shows where they, you, they show love, they also show, you know, all the angst, all the drama, you know, the, the triangles. And um, it's miserable. I mean, it's an interesting <laughs> show, but you don't really want to live that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. A lot of us think that we live in a TV show and this is like all virtual reality and stuff. Mm -hmm. and Bible. Christian teaching are just one of the script that no one wants to read, I, I guess. <laughs> so today you spoke a lot about families, love, and how you grow up. And it really gave us a glimpse of what we have to do because grow up fine. If Christians have the willingness to read the book and to yes. love God, and to have the fear of the Lord, we will do fine too. We will do fine. And it's not going to be easy. I've got lots of my own stories, but here I am today. I think today is a testimony that through all of the ups and downs of life and the trials, the tears, the Lord has been my shepherd. And He's gotten me through the valley of the shadow of death multiple times. He's brought me to this place where I have overcome. And that's what he says we can do. He doesn't want us to be a victim of difficulties. He says you can overcome. And then when we have overcome, we can help others to overcome. And that's what I would like to do. Yeah. Well, can you tell us where we can vote for you? Which district do you represent? And then Yes, we are in Los Angeles County and a bit of San Bernardino County. This is... District 25 for California State Senate. This is where I live and I serve as town council member in La Crescenta, Montrose. And there's the 210 freeway that goes all the way across to Rancho Cucamonga in San Bernardino County. These are the beautiful, our beautiful um, Angeles Crest Mountains. And so it goes from the north in the mountains through this is so there's Pasadena, South Pasadena, Alhambra, Monterey Park. There's San Gabriel, Rosemead. Ugh, I could just read these here. Um, <laughs> San Marino, San Gabriel, East Pasadena, South San Gabriel, Temple City, Sierra Madre, Monrovia, Arcadia, Mayflower Village, North El Monte, Rosemead, Glendora, Claremont, San Antonio Heights, Upland, Rancho Cucamonga, and if you have friends there, if you live there, um, we'd, I'd really like you to reach us at this website. So at the website, give us your information and let us know where you're located. And even if you're outside of the boundaries, we could really use your help in the campaign. The election for primary is the ballots come out in February, so people can start voting in February. I'm really looking to get all the way across the district. And so, Ethan, thank you so much for having me today and oh, thank you. letting me share. I'm learning so much from you, so much I need to find out about myself. And please help her. If you live in these district, 
all the people in Arcadia and Monrovia, our churches, come help her. Go to her website, donate to her for you, basically. She is really running for you. A Christian going to Sacramento, face Scott Wiener. <laughs> Well, anyway, thank you yes, for coming. Is yes, there anything more you so want to much. say to our audience? Um, well, <laughs> thanks for asking for the contributions. At the website, there is a donate button, and we really appreciate every donation because the political parties and the competition, they look at how much we have raised from grassroots people. That's not my own money because it shows that I have a lot of support. So um, any amount shows that we have support. The large amounts will really help us to get the word out all over. But Ethan, you've been a great help. Thank you so much. Thank you again for coming. We'll see you next time.